Hi friends, welcome to the Plain Fun RC channel. I'm your host, Saul, and we are gonna be doing an unboxing of the ESM DO335. And I can tell you without a doubt, it is a massive, massive plane, absolutely huge. The box itself has got to be somewhere in the neighborhood of almost eight feet. And the plane, just a fuselage alone, is uh, 84 inches long with an 83 inch wingspan. So let's get down to the unboxing. All right, friends, let's go ahead and start our unboxing here. Let's start off with uh, our wings. Now, this is not the original box that the plane came in. Uh, that box was needed uh, by me to ship some stuff. Uh, but we are going to go ahead and, uh, and just go ahead and get everything open and take a look at it. It's well packaged. We've got a nice uh, uh, foam covering on the inside, nicely sealed. Now, the ESM doesn't exist anymore. ESM stands for Ever Soaring Models. However, they made some wonderful planes, so if you're lucky enough to find one, grab one. You won't be disappointed. Uh, if you look back at my previous videos for the Atom A500, that particular plane was also made by Eversoaring Models. So, let's cut this open. Let's take a look and see what we've got inside. see just through the foam alone we see the German insignia right here and let's go ahead and tear open our foam this is a wonderful finish a very olive drab finish a flat finish the wings are built up uh, balsa Very carefully take this out. It is a rather thick, rather large wing half. The wingspan, as I mentioned earlier, uh, is um, uh, 83.5 to be exact. Whoops. Uh, you can see, judging by the flaps here, everything is pre hinged, which is really nice. It will have to be glued in place. But the hinges are already cut, which is which makes for a, a wonderful plane, as is our ailerons. Our ailerons are also pre-hinged as well, with slots already cut. So that is wing number one. Oh, one thing I wanted to point out before we continue. When we look at the bottom of the wing, if right in here, right where my finger is pointed, here, in here. Uh, you can see there is a wheel well that's outlined here that's hidden under the covering, so we just need to cut away the, the actual covering itself. It feels almost like a cloth-type covering. And we have, uh, not only do we have our wheel well here in this area over here, but we also have our, um, our servo door hatch here, okay, which is uh, uh, has a very nice plywood ring going around it, which should make it very easy to attach the actual servo, servo door itself. So it looks fantastic, very good. So we've got our servo doors, as you can see here, and they're painted and they look fantastic. All right, let's go ahead, we're gonna set this aside and let's take a moment to go ahead and grab our, our second wing. All right, same thing as the other wing, encased in foam, very nicely done. What I enjoy most about the ESM is that they did a lot of scale models, a lot of unique scale models, some things that you normally wouldn't find with uh, Horizon Hobby or Tower Hobbies or, or, or um, uh, many of the other planes that are out there, uh, manufacturers that are out there today. And uh, this is a great example. The DO-335 is an excellent example. All right, we're looking at the bottom of the wing again. Once again, same thing. We've got our, our servo hatch here. We have our, uh, you can feel our wheel well is here underneath the covering, so we just need to cut away the covering uh, in this area here. Uh, but she just looks fantastic. Pre-hinged as well. We'll have to glue the hinges in place, but the slots are there, which is nice. Very nice. And, of course, let's look at the top of our wing. Also very nicely done. Nice olive drab and everything. Just beautiful. Very, very nice. All right, let's go ahead and set this aside. Let's go ahead and, and grab our fuselage. 
This is huge. This is very big. I don't know if I'm going to be able to fit it all on camera. It's so big. Let's see what we can do. All right, we have our fuselage here. You can see wrapped in the same fashion, nicely uh, packaged in clear, uh, um, ba a clear bag with, uh, with the foam on the inside. Let's cut her open and see what we've got here. For those that are unfamiliar with the ESM DO335, it has an engine in the front and an engine in the rear. Okay, let's get our foam off of here. All right, so we've got a really nice olive drab finish, flat, wonderful hatch right here. Let me go ahead and get the foam out of the way. So this is a very, very large fuselage. Okay, well, here's a cowling right here. We'll take a look at that in just a second. Okay, so we've got a rear fiberglass cowling here um, for the rear engine. And we also have our hatch as well. So let's take a peek inside the hatch here, see what we've got. Get our tape off of there. What's well, going to finish is just beautiful. Very nice. Oh yeah, there you go. What a gorgeous finish on the inside. When we look inside the fuselage with the hatch removed, you can see everything has been uh, laser cut. Uh, you can see all your servos are going to be mounting uh, mounting uh, over here and a couple others as well over here. Uh, and fiberglass work is kind of so, so it's a little rough on the inside. You can see right over over there, not the, uh, not the cleanest work, but the overall it's still a good job. I imagine this is probably a very difficult uh, plane to model in fiberglass, but looking good. Let's take a moment to turn our fuselage over. We've got a, uh, a pre-cut area for the nose gear. A lot of space in here. And we also have our scoop, our rear scoop back here. And we have our access hatch all the way back here for our rear engine as well. And... Very nicely done. Firewall, of course, on both sides because we're doing, dealing with a push-pull configuration here. And then we also have some additional fiberglass scoop here on the side. Now, typically in the full-size DO335, the engine for the rear sat here. So that's why you see this, this opening in here. Uh, that is actually where the stacks are gonna go, or the exhaust, if you will, the mock exhaust. So this particular inlet right here would actually be a cooling inlet that would help to cool the motor. Very nicely done. All right, let's set this aside for a moment. It is a big, big plane, very big. Okay, let's go ahead and put our fuselage back in the box and continue taking a look at the other goodies that are included with the ARF. So the kit includes uh, a nice set of instructions, as you can see here, very detailed instructions. And they also include uh, a, a package of push rods as well. And then they have a, a fantastic hardware package and let's take a look at each and see what we've got here. So let's start with our box up front here. We've got uh, some fuel, we got a fuel tank here, a couple of them as a matter of fact, one here, and there should be another one someplace else as well. But in addition to the fuel tank, which we're not gonna need because we're gonna be doing electric, you've also got this fantastic um, canopy that's here. Very nicely uh, done, also pre-painted which is great. This one is cracked, which is a shame. 
we'll have to figure out something there how to fix that that shouldn't be too bad uh, that one did come cracked as you can see little crack not too bad uh but uh but very nicely done very detailed which is great uh and it, now in our next compartment here we have our rear cowling also fiberglass nicely done pre-painted and then we have our front cowling here wrapped up nicely and they even include some type of uh, bolt on the front Turning hardware up oh, there we go ah there we go okay Fiberglass cowl, nicely painted, very nicely done, nice flat, olive drab and gray. In addition, you have cowling rings, you have a cowling ring here, which you can see. So generally with the cowling ring, what's going to happen is it's going to wind up getting attached to the cowling itself. And then when you want to mount the cowling, the screws go here through here um, to help mount it to the... Um, to the firewall itself. So nicely cut, laser cut by that, by the way. And they include some kind of flywheel as well. Not sure what that's for, but we'll figure that out as we go. We open up our rear cowling here. Also fiberglass as well. Nicely done. Very nicely done. All right. Let's continue to explore all these other compartments that they have here. We've got a nice box here. Which is protecting another canopy. Oh, two canopies. Ah, oh my goodness. I know what happened. I think the previous owner of this particular plane, oops, recognized that the canopy was cracked and ordered a new one. Oh, they're wonderful. They are absolutely wonderful. Yay! Life is good. Beautiful. Oh, my goodness. That is fantastic. Oh, wow. That's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Yay, we've got a replacement canopy here, folks. Fantastic. Really like the way they painted it, by the way. Very nicely done. All right. All right, folks, let's take a look at our other compartment here. And you can see we've got our gear doors here. And they are also fiberglass. Also the olive drab. And it looks like they also include a set of gear doors for the nose as well, right here which is really nice, very nicely done, fantastic. We've got our uh, aluminum tube here, which you can see, I'm not gonna take that out, we'll leave that there. It looks like we've got what, what appears to be some type of extensions. I guess if you need the extensions for your, for your uh, motor, they include them. Very nicely done, machined and everything. All right, let's take a look at the other items that we have here in our in our kit. We have our rudder and our vertical stabilizer. So with the DO335, it has a rudder on top. And on the bottom, it also has a vertical stabilizer as well. So there's two vertical stabilizers. So if you looked at the plane from the rear, it looked like a plus sign. So let's take a look at our rudder first. Once again, like all the parts, they're wrapped in plastic and foam. Very nicely done. I know I've said it before, but I do love this, this, this flat olive drab finish. Just beautifully done. Beautifully done. But you can see here, pre-hinged balsa and ply. And uh, looking at our bottom vertical stabilizer... It also has 
a small rudder as well. So we've got two rudders on this plane. Two rudders. Very nicely done. We've got our horizontal stabilizers. Also pre-hinged, as you can see. Painted. Feels like it was covered, uh, covered and then painted. Balsa and ply. Very nice. Very, very nice. All right, let's take a look at what's, what's in here. And let's see, we have a nice hardware package here, which includes some dowlings and some dowels and some um, hardwood blocks. And it looks like we've got also the fixed gear, which you can see right there, just right there. And they include a, 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 a rib of some kind. I suspect this is probably a template. When ESM includes these, they usually include them because they're templates of some kind. So that would be this item right here. But we'll see. We'll take a look at it. All right, let's set that aside. A couple more items. Uh, in addition to the hardware kit, we've got a set of st a stacks here. As you can see, exhaust stacks, very nicely done. And it's got two sets. So there's one for the uh, one for the front of the plane and one for the rear as well. And they're plastic. So they'll look great on the plane. And then finally, which I think is really cool, the last goodie here is our wheel wells. They actually include, these are just plastic, but they include these giant wheel wells. You can see in relation to my hand just how big these wheel wells are. They're huge, absolutely huge, but they come preformed, which is really nice. It's going to clean that area up uh, in the wing where the retracts are located. We also have an additional hardware kit here. Uh, they include some really nice wheels, light foam wheels, and of course all the necessary hardware and two additional fuel tanks as well. And they include the, uh, the mounting rails if you're going to be putting in a, a four-stroke motor. So they've got some great stuff here that they've included with the kit itself. Very nicely done. All right. So speaking of retracks, uh, what came with the kit are these amazing scale retracks from Sierra Giant Scout. And these are a special order. The kit itself, uh, the ARF comes with fixed gear. Uh, it does not come with retracks. So this was obviously a custom order by the previous owner. And I will tell you, if you're looking for scale landing gear, you cannot go wrong with Sierra Giant Scale. The only problem I have with Sierra Giant Scale is they're still just doing them in pneumatic. Now, there are companies out there that will convert it. There was one called Down and Locked. Another guy is still in business. Uh, not cheap. I mean, you're looking at four to $500 to get uh, these three gear uh, converted. Next to it, however, this is the Robart landing gear uh, that is made for the ESM. Now, I will tell you that, um, as you can see, it's not as scale as the um, as the ones from uh, Sierra Giant Scale, uh, but, uh, but I, I really prefer electrics. I have used pneumatics in the past. I hate them because if you even have the tiniest leak somewhere in the airline, good luck trying to find it because it will take you forever to determine where the leak, the leak is coming from. At least with retracts, you know, it's, it's electric that is, electric retracts, it's pretty straightforward. So you've got your nose gear here. As you can see, very nicely done, nicely made. And then we've got our mains for the Robart. And they're also nicely made as well. Now, Robart, not only does it include the landing gear, they include the axles, and they also include the controller for the, uh, for the unit itself, as you can see here. And th the controller will even do gear doors. So keep that in mind. They also include the wiring to connect the retracts to the controller. And in addition, um, um, you do have the ability to go ahead and, uh, and use the, the Robart uh, wheels. They have scale wheels, treaded wheels um, for World War II aircraft that they sell separately. Now, let me just show you the Sierra Giant Scout. They are a work of art. I don't know how well you can see them, but let me just bring it in a little closer to the camera so you can get a really good, a good, a good idea. 
They are just gorgeous. They are just absolutely gorgeous uh, landing gear. Very stout, very well made. By comparison, you can see in the, 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 the difference in, in the uh, diameter of the strut for the Sierra Giant scale as opposed to the Robart itself. Very different. Now, one of the things that I really do like a lot, though, about the uh, the Sierra Giant scale, I don't know if you can see it on camera, I'll do the best I can. If you look right here, let me see if I can come up nice and tight. There we go. Right there, see that pin right there where my finger's pointing at? That is the pin that connects to the uh, to the main strut. And notice how nicely it moves. Now, I'm going to try to retract the gear by hand. I don't know if this is going to work real well. Yep, there we go. Notice how the pin, watch the pin closely. Notice how the pin disengages. Okay, so this is the steering yoke right here that would remain connected or, to the actual servo itself. And when the retract it retracts up, you can see that this is able to move freely. So therefore, when you're uh, steering your, your, uh, your rudders, you're not going to have any impact on the servo. When the gear extends, watch the pin closely. You can see it falls back into place on the steering yoke itself, thereby allowing you to steer the actual uh, uh, no, the strut itself. Very nicely done. Extremely well made. Now with the mains, like I said, they are a work of art. You can see they're very stout, very stout, very well made, really nicely done. And they've got an oleo strut as well. And of course, by comparison with the Robart mains, also nicely made, but obviously very different, very different in terms of diameter. So, Anyway, it was cheaper to purchase the uh, the Robart rather than sending these over to Down and Locked and getting them converted. And I've had I've sent a, a pair of pneumatics over to Down and Locked. They, they do a beautiful job, beautiful job, but they're very very expensive. Anyway, that's it for the kit right now, folks. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead. Please, uh, uh, love for you to follow along as we do the build. Obviously, they don't make the Do three three five anymore, so this will be a real treat uh to uh to watch build and ultimately fly as well folks thanks for watching please like and subscribe and stay tuned for more more to come